Yu Ching Shi is studying um, engineering honours um, with a majoring in mechatronics in the School of Electrical Engineering, Computing and Mathematical Sciences. I've rehearsed that a number of times over the years. Um, his um, project is for gamification of joint rehabilitation using non-invasive sensors. Um, he's being um, supervised um, by Sivash Kashkar, which is over just there, um, and uh, funding for Yu Ching's um, internship scholarship came from the Hive and uh, the Faculty of Science and Engineering. Good morning all and welcome to Hive. So my name is Ching, as uh, Andrew already taught you. So my project is on the gamification of joint rehabilitation and this project I mainly focus on the rehabilitation of wrists and fingers. And this project forms a part of my supervisor, Sivaj Kachas, uh, PhD research as well. So first I'll start with why do we need rehabilitation after injury or surgery. So the reason for that is for patients to fully recover from uh, their injuries, uh, re restore their full range of motion and strength, and to prevent them from injuring the same joint uh, in the future. So on the right picture here, you can see that there's uh, some examples for the re rehabilitation exercises. So the traditionally, um, these exercises are done under the supervision of either a doctor or physiotherapist. So usually each section of would take around three, 30 to 60 minutes and a minimum of three sessions per week is required to, for it to be effective. So a barrier for that is that the time and the cost for uh, this method will make people think this is not something they'll consider after they are uh, injured their wrists. Uh, some people also think, oh, what if uh, I, don't, I don't even need to do rehabilitation exercises or, um, or I can just perform those exercises at home by myself. It's a simple muscle stretching exercise, right? Well, this is not the case. When performing the rehabilitation exercise, exercises at home by yourself without supervision, it can cause second injury to the damaged joint if you go over the um, go over the recommended range of motion. And if you don't do rehabilitation exercises, then it can cause the construction construction of muscle strength, poor growth in the scar tissues, and decrease blood flow to the affected areas. So all of this, of course, a irreversible um, damage to the damaged joints. So the aim of this project um, and why we use the gamified method. So first of all, everything is online. So the whole platform is online. So it makes it accessible to more people. Um, by implementing the element of gamification and rewarding system, it provides more engagement and motivation for people to perform the exercises. Uh, in the framework, it will provide guidance for each exercise so the patient knows uh, what degree of motion they can perform up to. And lastly, all the uh, movements and the results are, are recorded for future monitoring. So what's required for this project? Because the range of motion of the patients are, are to be captured, we'll use sensors and technologies for those. So the primary sensor we use is this XSense.IMU. So it's an inertial, inertial measurement unit that allows you to capture the uh, orientation measurement. So um, this, the idea of this sensor is we have one on the top of our hand and the other on top of our wrist. And later we calculate the difference between the orientation of both to get the final joint angle. So we have validated the uh, feasibility of this sensor for in clinical applications and this sensor is extremely light making it non-invasive to the human hands when during use and is relatively low cost and extremely accurate in measuring. When we move to, on to the finger exercises it's not really that practical to have one of these sensors on each of the fingers so what we do is we use a library um, called Media Pipe Hands that's developed, developed by Google that's able to recognize the hand landmarks and produce the uh, coordinates. So these coordinates will be used to determine the angles. And finally, we, uh, we create all the visualization framework and all the mini games in the Unity game engine. Just a quick run through of the method of creating the whole project. 
So we first have the media pipelines and the XSense dot sensors, and to extract all the data from this uh, technology, we'll have some background application that is able to extract those and send it to Unity. And in Unity, we'll create, create framework for the patient to perform exercises, and from there, we create little mini games that's more entertaining and fun for them to do the exercises from. So this is just a short video to show the overall um, set, overall picture of the framework. So as you can see, there's patient. You can enter the patient name, so you know which patient is doing the exercises. There's a, a section for the goal, so you know what needs to be done, how many repetitions need to be done per day. You can set the threshold, so the maximum and the minimum are threshold for your range of motion, and those thresholds can also be loaded from the file. There's also sections where you can check the rewards, so after you achieve your rehab goals, you, uh, you can receive awards. And those are the different pages where you can perform the different type of exercises and their relative games. So this is for the extension flexion. I've got the radio winner our deviation exercises. The pronation and supination exercises with its game. And finally, we have the thumb touching exercises for the fingers. So this is an example of me performing the extension flexion exercise, which requires the two sensors attached on the back of my hand and the wrist. So as you can see, you are able to adjust to manually enter the number of repetitions at whole time for each of the exercises. If you look at the bottom right corner, you can see my range of motion is mapped with the avatars. And all the joint angles will be are uh, recorded and displayed to the users. And there will be, there will be instruction prompt, prompted to the user that you should be doing extension or you should be doing flexion and you have to hold for a certain amount of time. And let's say if your initial position is not at zero degrees, then you can press space to calibrate the joint angles. And here we're just doing our three repetitions for three ho seconds whole time each. And exercise done once the our repetitions are finished. And here's an example of finger, the thumb touching exercises. So you can see the movement of the fingers are mapped to my movement at the corner as well. So in here, we only care about the number of repetitions you perform the exercises, and it will prompt to the user what finger you meant to be touching each time. And just last repetition. So after each section, uh, exercise sections are done, all the data are recorded. So those are all the information that's recorded into your Excel file. And you can see the graph generated for extension flexion exercise. You can clearly see the orange section where the patient uh, can move their wrist up and down as expected. Next, we move on to the game, the, game, the mini games for the exercises. So the, there's two types of mini games. One where there's very strict requirements from the range of motion of the wrist, where the other one, the patients are, can freely move their uh, wrists. So this game is where, is where you, the range of motion is restricted. So to start this game, you have to set the number of repetitions and the whole time. And it's called Monster Chase. So the character in the game only moves if you hold your uh, wrist joint at a certain angle. And the idea is to get as much distance travel as possible and to finish all the repetitions. 
And as you can see, the joint angle are mapped to uh, my, my range of motion in real time. And game over. So all the rest of the games are games where the users can freely move their wrists. So this is an example game for the flexion extension exercises. So it's Flappy Bird. So you can see the movement of bird, the up and down movement maps with the flexion extension motion of my wrist. And the height of the pipe is adjusted so that you have to move your wrist accordingly to pass the pipes. And the players are rewarded with our points. And next game is for the radio owner deviation exercises. So it's a, technically a breakout game. <clears throat> so in this game, you have to uh, move your wrist left and right to map the radio owner uh, motion to control the paddles in the game. And this game, you want to try and break the brick, which you need to achieve around 30, a score of 30. And this game is for the pronation and supination exercises. It's called Dodge the Spike. The idea is to throw the ball left and right to dodge the spike that falls from the sky. And if you fail, it's game over. Controls the the force that's being exerted onto the ball. Yeah. And the last game is for the finger thumb touching exercises, piano tiles. So there's four white tiles and a black tile will appear randomly across those, and you have to touch certain fingers to score. So you see on the corners, if you touch the wrong thing, finger, then your life decreases. And a certain note will be played once you hit uh, the tile. So the purpose of the gaming is just to bring an interactive way for a patient to perform the exercises while having fun. So in terms of future work, there will be focus group that will be conducted by Sivash with our physiotherapist and occupational therapist to discuss the feasibility and the practic practicality of the application. And there are also poss possible publication of this project in MDPI paper, uh, sensor paper. And uh, one problem with the uh, project is that there need to be a background application that to extract all the data from the sensors and from media pipe, which are not user friendly to patients who doesn't have any coding experience. And once everything's pro proven valid, we can start uh, include exercises on other joints such as knee and neck. So what's the impact? Uh, this application can potentially change the way how, of how rehabilitation is done. It can significantly reduce uh, patients with the joint injuries. For patients with cerebral palsy, it can reduce their uh, stiff muscle and pain and improve the quality of life of those who cannot access to health services. And I'd like to thank my primary supervisor, Sivash, my core supervisor, Wesley, and Curtin High for all the support for the two months and making this project possible. And thank you all for listening. <laughs>